Hey guys, this is AC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is how to find out what refrigerant is in an air conditioning system or refrigeration system. Uh, we're going to be using the refrigerant uh, itself along with the PT chart in order to determine what refrigerant it is. A lot of times we end up having to do this because the rating plate is completely gone on this. Um, if the rating plate is gone or it's just worn off, you could also look at the side of the compressor. Sometimes there's a tag on the side of the compressor that'll say what refrigerant it is. Also, you could look at the thermostatic expansion valve if, if it is equipped with that metering device, such as this one right here. That's an R22 thermostatic expansion valve. And here's an R410A thermostatic expansion valve. But now, not only do you have to determine if it's R22 or R410A, you now have to also determine, is it a retrofit refrigerant? Now you should have these tags on them uh, if, uh, if a system was changed out to MO99, which is also known as R438A. Um, here's another tag for uh, new 22B, also known as R422B. So let's just go ahead and look at this real quick. Uh, we have our measurement for temperature. This system is equalized. It's been sitting here for about, about an hour and it has not turned on. Uh, I will tell you if it's a split system, and it's the pressures are not completely equalized which means that the the pressure maybe on this side it was lower and this side was higher uh, you want to take a look at the higher one because this is giving you the pressure of the refrigerant at the outdoor unit so if the unit has been sitting there for half an hour or an hour uh, this is going to be more realistic to the temperature that it is outside so you have your temp probe on the liquid line and you're determining what refrigerant it is you really want to wait until they're both lines are equalized, but sometimes this is in a cooler environment over at the evaporator coil and also where the line set's running in the house, whereas uh, this gauge right here will give you more of the outside temperature because this gauge is kind of telling you what temperature these fins are at. So that's giving you the outside temperature. Right now you see that both of these are equalized. You read the pressure, and we're reading 114 PSIG on both sides which if you bring that into the green inner ring, uh, that is actually the temperature of R22 at that given pressure. So you see that our gauges right here are reading about 66.5. Same thing right here, it's right around 66 to 67. And you see our temp sensor is reading 66 degrees. And you can tell the refrigerant in the system is not r 4 a because at 66 degrees, if you, if you look right here, we're looking at about 195 PSIG. So this needle would be at a much higher pressure at the saturated state, 66 degrees for R4 tonight. I want you to know basically that this right here, if you can think about it, it's like the pressure of a refrigerant bottle at 66 degrees. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you an R22 bottle at 66 degrees and we're gonna read the pressure on that as well. So we have our R22 refrigerant bottle uh, at about 66.5 degrees and it's exerting a pressure of right around 113 to 114 PSIG. Uh, same thing on the outdoor unit. This refrigerant bottle has been in the same environment as the outdoor unit so it's the same temperature. So we have uh, roughly about 66.5 uh, degrees. It's exerting our pressure the same on these gauge sets as we do on our quick tech test cage. So I want you to think about this unit being like a large refrigerant bottle uh, when it's equalized and it's at saturated state. So here we have an R410A bottle at the same temperature as the outdoor unit right here. And this one, if you follow it into the pink inner ring, remember that this R410A bottle, it has vapor and liquid at the same time it's in the saturated state. And this right here, you take the pressure which is reading 187 PSIG, you bring that in and it's reading 66 degrees on the pink inner ring. So remember that if the temperature goes up, so in this case, uh, say the temperature went to uh, 70 degrees where this bottle was located at, then the pressure would be higher. The pressure would be at about 201 PSIG. So the pressure follows temperature in the saturated state just like it does in the system uh, with it equalized and the system off. So it's very easy to tell the difference between r 4 a which is, in this case, 187 PSIG at roughly about 66 degrees versus the R22 at a much lower pressure uh, at the same temperature of 66 degrees as we read right here. 
Now that compared to something like a retrofit refrigerant for R22, they would be at a very close uh, pressure temperature correlation to R22. But typically they're gonna be a little bit higher when they're just at the saturated state. Uh, new 22 might be the closest. That would be very, very close to R22. So you're really relying on the stickers that the technician should have placed on the system indicating what refrigerant's inside the unit. Now if you notice at the saturated state when the system's off that the pressure is uh, higher and say it's lining up with a say 90 degree or 85 degree uh, saturated temperature and these are both equalized then the system could instead of having a retrofit refrigerant it could actually have non-condensables in the system and the way to determine that is to end up turn, turning the unit on and you're going to check for excessively high pressures on both sides and a very high superheat, low subcooling, uh, and TXV hunting. It's going back and forth, back and forth. Now normally high superheat on this side and low subcooling would mean low refrigerant charge, but you'd be able to tell it has non-condensables in the system because it has excessively high uh, pressures on both sides. So in that case, you'd have to shut the unit off, recover the refrigerant out of the system, vacuum the system back down, and weigh virgin refrigerant back in again. So it used to be a lot simpler before we had the retrofit refrigerants. If we saw that with the system equalized, that the saturated temperature was a lot higher than whatever it actually is, uh, then we knew immediately that the refrigerant charge was contaminated. But now you kind of have to turn the system on, just make sure that the unit is in fact running uh, incorrectly in order to determine if you have non-condensables in the system. Now if the uh, saturated temperature is reading below what it says it should be, uh, then that would be the indication of a severe leak. So in that case, basically you've leaked out maybe seven-eighths or three-quarters of your full refrigerant charge out of the system and you're only left with about an eighth or a quarter left because there's no liquid in the system to end up flashing into a gas in order to exert pressure to the same pressure it would be at the saturated temperature of 66 degrees. So if you have a lower saturated temperature on an equalized system, then you know that you have a severe leak even before you turn the system on. In the case of a minor leak, you won't be able to tell that you actually have a leak until the system is running because as long as there's liquid in the system, it will actually uh, vaporize and apply pressure the same as if the system was full. It's only when there's no liquid left in the system that the pressure and the saturated temperature will end up dropping when the system is off. And if you're looking for the tools used in this video, I have them all linked down in the description below. And if you want to help support this HVACR training channel, check out patreon.com slash Hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.